Hello, welcome back. Mike from Canavan Wealth, doing my next video on teaching wealth. Uh, I've got this article that's going to be coming out on the website blog here, Financial Mistakes to Avoid in 2023. Nothing groundbreaking here. I thought the best way to do this was to kind of tie these into a time in my life that money was, was pretty tight. So uh, I got into the industry about 10 years ago, and I used to work in corporate America. I made kind of just shy of about $100,000. My wife was a practicing occupational therapist at the time. She did very well, pretty darn close to that. Uh, we had our two kids, and we lived in this big house up on the hill here in Idaho Falls, a place called Camora Loma. When I moved from upstate New York, uh, we sold our kind of $300,000 starter home in upstate New York. And we just, just you know, that's the price range we looked at here because we kind of didn't know any difference. And we ended up with this monstrosity up on the hill. And we used to kind of joke because there were like pillars in the living room. It was like totally didn't fit us. But we loved the view. It was a, it was a great yard for the kids at that time. Uh, but when I made the decision to kind of leave a regular paying job, become a financial advisor. We had no idea how much money we were going to make. And my assumption was zero uh, because the industry has a pretty high failure rate. And it's just a very slow industry to get started in. Uh, so we knew we had to go. We effectively had to cut our salary in half. And there were two major things that we did. The first is this first one uh, that the article talks about, which is budgeting. And I already did a recent video about how to live within your means, um, which is, is very important. And tr attempting to live within your means without budgeting is very, very hard, specifically if you want to save. Now, this is supposed to save 20%. Um, that's very hard for most people. That would be absolutely a target. For us, we actually made the decision for the next couple of years, we effectively weren't going to save anything. So we did not save into 401ks or anything along those lines. Our kind of investment savings went to zero. Um, so that we knew we were kind of making a lifestyle choice here to try and you know start into a new profession. Um, but I think the more importantly than actually you know developing the budget is how do you hold yourself accountable to the budget? And the number one tool that I have learned in this time period and told lots of people who ask me about, you know, want a tip for kind of living with your means or budgeting is create something that, like a sheet of paper where you track your budget day to day. And every day at the end, when we would get home, my wife and I, we would write down everything we spent. And since everything in our household goes through either one credit card or one checking account, you know, through a debit or something, it's pretty easy to, 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 you know, figure out if you spent something and we would write it down and you'd be amazed if, you know, if, if you have to kind of level with yourself every day when you get home from work, that I'm going to, if I, if I go out to lunch today, I'm going to have to write down, you know, $10 or whatnot on the sheet. And that's going to come out of the eating out budget or whatever it was. So uh, that was the best way I found to hold myself accountable. We did this for years afterwards uh, where we would write down what we spent every month. I used to have these sheets to be able to go back. We would track it in different categories. It worked really, really fantastically. Um, the other thing we did, which is over here, is you know keeping up with the Joneses is we sold the house. Uh, we sold our I think we sold it for like three ten or something, and we bought a house down in town for one hundred twenty thousand dollars. Which to some people in the country sounds like, how can you buy a house for one hundred twenty thousand dollars here in Idaho Falls at the time? You cannot anymore. You could get a house. The most starter homes, you know, kind of three bedroom, were going for about one sixty at the time, and we found this. Four bedroom, two thousand square foot house for one hundred twenty thousand dollars because it was like walking into a time machine. It was all nineteen sixties original. The house was built in nineteen sixty two. Uh, the kitchen, I'm I'm not exaggerating, had the original stove in it. And we immediately renovated the kitchen to give us the kitchen that both my wife and I had always wanted. We do a lot of cooking, and um, otherwise we slowly renovated the rest of it. The bathrooms were nineteen sixties bathrooms, and and yet that house has been more of a home to us than any of our previous more expensive houses, right? And yes, we've put some money into renovating it, but we did that on our time frame and on our time schedule and not in these first few years where, where we were working on it. That is probably the soundest financial decision I've ever made in my life, which was buying the cheapest house in a fantastic neighborhood because our neighborhood really is a fantastic neighborhood. So 
Um, we made it through that time period uh, very well. My business obviously worked out. Um, I, I do want to talk about this other one here, paying for conveniences. This is where my wife and I still struggle. And, and, and it's not that we struggle. I think every couple, every you know individual needs to ask themselves, what is important to them? Because my wife and I, we're, we're not spenders. We've gotten to the point in our life where we don't want more things, right? Like the idea of buying a four-wheeler or something, I'm just like, where am I going to store it? Or a drift boat around here. We do a lot of fishing. I'm like, I, I don't want to deal with a drift boat. We do not want more things. <coughs> we, however, spend our money on convenience. Um, you know, and it's, we, we don't, we eat out of, Fair bit lunches mostly uh, we we cook mostly so it's not like Grubhub or things like that but we don't shop around a lot we um, you know we like fish we cannot find fish in Idaho like good fresh fish so we we get it you know effectively shipped in from Alaska it is outrageously expensive but it's one of those things that we're just like yeah but we like eating fish and we can't get it around here so we pay through the nose for decent fresh fish. Um, but otherwise, you know, we buy kind of budget chicken, beef, and uh, things along those lines. So uh, this article will go up here on the website. I think if you are looking for some topics to start talking to teenagers about, about being financially savvy, these are great ones. Because uh, simple truth is if you can start your life out with a target of saving 20% of your income, very tough these days. I, I'm not sure how realistic that is. But if that's the way you can start your life, man, you are really going to be setting yourself up. And similarly, when you go out, you know, the biggest thing I get when people are buying houses is I just say, you know, the simple truth is three months after you move into that house, it's going to be home no matter what. You can make anything your home. Look for a good neighborhood. Cheapest house is it. Cheapest house in it. All right. I hope this has helped. Uh, if you have any questions, just shoot them to Mike at Canavan Wealth. If there's any topics uh, you'd like me to cover, uh, Mike at CanavanWealth.com. And I will talk to you soon.